There have never been as many options for insulin therapy as there are right now. But with all of these different types of insulin available, it can be a little overwhelming when trying to keep them all straight and to keep track of exactly what each type of insulin is for. Welcome to Sugar High Guys, I'm PA David, your glycosylated guide, and today I'm guiding you through a jungle of insulins. Let's get you familiar with the different types of insulin, the various brands, and how each one is meant to be used. Okay, first things first, standard disclaimer. This is general information on the typical use of insulin and not meant as medical advice for you personally. Do not start or stop any medication without consulting your own healthcare provider first. Cool, disclaimer done. Now for the important stuff. Not all insulins are created equal. Each available insulin has its own unique properties and duration of action that give it a specific purpose. It may seem like insulin is just insulin, but each different type has its own job and is used for a particular purpose in managing blood glucose. You guys wanna know a secret? This stuff confuses even us healthcare providers. I had been out of school and in general practice for a few years before I finally understood the difference between all these different insulins, and I'm not the only one. So if you find it difficult to keep these different insulins straight, that's understandable. But if you hang in there to the end of this video, you will know more about insulins than the average recent medical school graduate. To understand the differences between all these insulins in a simple and understandable way, all we really need to do is to divide them into two groups, long-acting insulins and short-acting insulins. Long-acting insulins are meant to be used for slow and sustained coverage in the background, like overnight and in between meals. But with long-acting insulins, there's no burst of extra power to cover for a meal when we eat. For moments like that, we have short-acting insulins. Short-acting insulin is there to start working right away and then quit after a short amount of time. That way, as glucose floods into the body from food, it gets managed by that quick burst of insulin and the glucose doesn't climb too high. So long-acting insulins kind of work like this. They burn slow and they burn steady and they last little by little all throughout the night. But when you get a rush of glucose from a meal and you need that quick burst of insulin to cover for that glucose, fast acting insulin kind of burns like this. It burns hot and it burns bright, but it burns fast and it's gone. So since long acting insulins are used by more people, let's start with those. Long acting insulins are referred to as basal insulins. They offer baseline insulin action quietly and gently in the background. If you're using a basal insulin, the most noticeable effect of it is what happens with your glucose overnight while you're sleeping. Assuming you're sticking to the right diet, you'll know if your basal insulin is doing its job and if it's at the right dose if your fasting glucose first thing in the morning is at a good level. If your fasting glucose is too high, one possibility is that the dose of basal insulin is too low. If you're waking up in the early morning hours with hypoglycemia, that might indicate that the basal insulin is too high and might need to be reduced. But keep in mind that many different factors can cause hypoglycemia, so if that's happening to you, make sure you get advice from your own healthcare provider to see if a reduced dose would be appropriate or if some other change is needed. The first basal insulin that we ever had was called NPH. Diabetes trivia, NPH stands for Neutral Protamine Hagedorn. And it was discovered when they found that they could get insulin's action to last longer when they mixed insulin with a protein from fish sperm. I don't know what made them think that that would be a good idea. You know what, maybe some questions are just better left unanswered. NPH isn't really a long acting insulin since it doesn't last a full day and it's usually injected twice a day. We refer to it as an intermediate acting insulin, but even with twice daily dosing, it's still used for basal or background control. NPH works well enough to reduce the blood glucose in the A1C, but the level of insulin with NPH tends to rise and fall throughout the day, hitting hardest about six hours after injection, 
rather than staying steady and even like some of the newer long lasting insulins. Unfortunately, that can result in some pretty common fluctuations and unpredictability of glucose levels and hypoglycemia is one of the biggest concerns with NPH. In fact, the hypoglycemia issues is one of the major factors that led to the development of some of the newer long lasting insulins. Newer insulins are no more effective at lowering A1C than NPH, but they cause significantly less hypoglycemia. It's a safety issue. In the United States, NPH is available under the brand names Humulin N and Novolin N. Novolin N is also available at a discounted price under Walmart's brand Relyon. And even though these are two different names, they're all the same insulin, just produced by two different companies. In other countries, NPH is known by several different other names, and you'll see some examples of that here on the screen. NPH is a cloudy insulin that needs to be mixed before you inject it. Most insulins are clear, and if they turn cloudy, they need to be thrown away. But NPH is supposed to be cloudy, so don't let that throw you off. Lantus came around in the year 2000 and became the first true long-acting once daily insulin. That made it a major game changer and it quickly became the standard insulin for background basal glucose control. Lantus is usually injected in the evenings but really can be injected any time of the day so long as the time of day is consistent. You wouldn't want to inject a full dose of this guy in the evening and then inject another full dose the next morning with only like 8 or 10 hours in between. Lantus is somewhat acidic, so you might notice a slight burning feeling right after injecting it, kind of like lemon juice on a scratch. That acidic pH allows the insulin to stay dissolved in the liquid, but when you inject it, your body tissues bring the pH back to neutral, which causes the insulin to form into tiny microscopic crystals under your skin. Those tiny little crystals slowly dissolve and absorb into your bloodstream over the next day, which is what allows you to inject a whole day's worth of insulin all in one shot and then have it slowly work all day long. In 2015, the patent on Lantus expired, which allowed other companies to begin making their own versions of insulin glargine, which is the generic name of Lantus. The company that makes Humulin decided that they wanted a piece of the pie and they started making Basaglar. Known as a basiglar in Europe, basiglar is the same type of insulin as Lantus and it's meant to be a less expensive version. Well, how much cheaper? Well, let's check it out. Uh, about 15%. That's not that huge of a savings. It's not technically a generic since biologic medications like insulin are much harder to make than typical medications like metformin, for example and there are slight variances in the chemical structure of each insulin. So it's technically referred to as a follow-on or a biosimilar, but to be honest, most people still think of it as the generic form of Lantus since the definitions of biosimilar and follow-ons are kind of confusing and we can make a whole video just on that topic. Speaking of things that are also the same as Lantus, Tujeo is also insulin glargine, but in a concentrated form. If you took Lantus and put three times as much of this insulin into the same amount of liquid, you'd have two jail. It's sort of like concentrated laundry detergent. One cup of detergent washes the same load of laundry, but the amount of liquid in the cup is smaller. So if it's the same insulin made by the same company, you might be wondering, what's the point? Well, it turns out that when you concentrate it down like that, you get two major benefits. Number one is that if you're on a large dose of Lantus, like 80 units for example, that large volume of liquid can be pretty uncomfortable to inject all at once. You can dial that same 80 units of 2JO and you get the same amount of insulin, but one third the amount of liquid that gets injected. The other benefit of 2JO over Lantus is that when you concentrate glargine down like that, it kind of behaves a little differently. Lantus was intended to be an all day 24 hour insulin, but in reality, it only makes it to about 18 to 20 hours before it starts to fizzle out. So many people notice that they don't really get a complete day of coverage with Lantus or Basaglar. The same dose of 2JO seems to last a little bit longer and actually goes for about 30 to 36 hours. So even though it's technically the same insulin, it's a bit more steady and stable, giving that full day of coverage. Levomir is a different insulin that was developed about four or five years after Lantus first became available. It was also intended to be a once daily insulin and was the first real competition to Lantus. But even though it's newer, Levomir wears off a little faster than Lantus and while some people do get a full 24 hours of coverage out of Levomir, many others notice that it starts to wear off after about 16 to 18 hours. 
So in people who need higher doses, I've actually had better luck splitting Levomir into two equal doses twice a day. Traceva is the newest and longest lasting basal insulin. It's made by the same company as Levomir, but Traceva is sort of everything that its older brother Levomir wanted to be. Traceva lasts about 42 hours and has the smoothest, flattest profile of all of them. It's available in the standard 100 unit per milliliter form like Lantus and Basiglar, but there's also a two times concentration that allows injecting the same amount of insulin in one half the volume. The thing that makes that smooth insulin profile so awesome is the predictability and the stability of it. In a clinical trial that tested Traceva against Lantus in people who had high cardiovascular risk, they found that there was a 40% reduction in episodes of severe hypoglycemia with Traceva. So there's your introduction to long-acting basal insulins. Now, even though a person with type 2 diabetes may need one daily dose of long-acting insulin, when it comes to a meal, a low-carb diet can often be enough to allow a person to maintain stable glucose levels even after eating. But as we mentioned earlier, in people with type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetics whose pancreas can no longer make enough insulin to cover for those meals, a fast-acting insulin is used to serve as a quick burst of glucose-lowering action to keep food from shooting the glucose levels into the sky. And we're gonna get all up in fast-acting insulins in part two of this video. You can check that out right here. See you soon, sugar high. Fast-acting insulins kind of burn like this. <laughs>